Do you know one of the best ways that me personally I've learned how to develop my game a little bit within the game of chess is looking at beginner, intermediate and even the advanced level players games and looking at them in the armchair sort of situation yeah so armchair chess watching their games and I'm there shouting at the screen I'm going oh my god they missed this they missed that how could they make that move it's so obvious oh my gosh why have they done it this way oh my days oh they're not too clever oh that you know so being an armchair chess player as well as being a practicing chess player the armchair side does make me laugh because I say to myself well you do that too when I look at the games that I play and then I look at the evaluation afterwards I go oh my days how could you have made that move look at that you've missed that oh that's an obvious check oh you got checkmated you would have been checkmated if the opponent had seen it you know so the evaluation tool is like my armchair cynicism yeah and it really does highlight you know the mistakes and the errors that you do make in your games you may feel really good that you've won a game and then you look at it and the opponent maybe could have won in like one move but they didn't see it so that's how you sort of learn and get better but one of the better ways for me learning as well is actually looking at other people's games and doing the same sort of thing that the evaluation tool does to me I'm basically looking and going wow, wow I don't I don't understand why that happened they could have done this so then you start learning yourself you start saying okay they could have won that game a little bit earlier or if they'd have moved this piece to X Y and Z place they would have been in a better position so that's a good way that I felt for actually advancing my learning and knowledge within um, within chess so the intermediary um, tutorial that we're going through now is like an extension of the beginner tutorial that we have just uh, released with the additional aspects of furthering the calculation that we do do um, but not to the extent of trying to think 50 moves ahead etc because as we know the opponent doesn't have to do what you are calculating so don't waste your brain power on too much over calculating but what we want to do is within the intermediary level advancing the capturing for your benefit and just whipping pieces off the board yeah so capturing to remove pieces from the board strategically so that then there's no war so basically you want to get rid of the army that the opponent has got so that they can't have anything to attack you with basically at the end of the day keep that strategy all the way through the beginner intermediate advanced and if you get to the expert level then expert level and so on and so forth if you don't keep that strategy and you then start going arty then that's when you'll start losing against the lower rated players and your game doesn't advance as much so genuinely keep that basic um, concept of capture when where you need to appropriately try not to keep as much tension on the board only keep the tension when it's appropriate in the intermediary level there's probably a little bit more tension now that we're going to start delving into but it's appropriate tension to make appropriate captures that benefit yourself and start to pressure the king area and higher pieces more so so let's dive in on the intermediary level we're looking at intermediate level now and what I'm going to say is going to shock and surprise you there's no difference there's no difference in the way that you operate from playing as a beginner if you have good basics which are having a good psychology that you want to remove pieces from the board you want to find good position on the board and you want to find the good spaces on the board and have the ability to be able to attack the king area attack pieces with smaller pieces higher pieces with smaller pieces to gain that advantage all it is is a matter of consistently practicing that that psychology keeping it as the one psychology which is well, at the end of the day take pieces off the board so the pe person doesn't have as many pieces on the board to actually 
fight you with. Case in point, as we've just done here, we've both now got less pieces on the board to mess about with. So now we're looking at trying to use a bit of science now, position, yep. Try and let, get a little bit of um, a strategy going. So now his king's castled, our king's castled. What's the weaknesses? We've got poor majority on this side. He's got poor majority on the other side. So how do we take advantage of that? So the difference I would say in thinking now from the, the beginner stage is just how you then add your strategy into the taking the pieces off the board. Nothing complicated, nothing airy, nothing too fancy, just nice and simple. Think about your strategy now. What we're looking at is what are his strengths and what are our strengths? What are our weaknesses and what are their weaknesses? So it's now trying to pinpoint which pieces you want to take off the board. Which pieces you want to attack. Rather than in the beginning stage where, okay, if they give it to you, just take it. If they give it to you, just take it as best possible. Um, just to get familiar with the pieces. Now this is, you have to think about, well, which one is going to put me in that better position more ideally than I did when I was a beginner that's the only difference but you have to maintain to me you have to maintain that psychology of yes if there's tension to be had then tension to be had but if you keep the tension for too long the person who gets the break is going to win so there's no point to me keeping any tension that is going to has the potential for going on for a long period of time yep so see how our opponent is attacking all the key squares he's looking at the bishop coming here he's got the rook lined up for this pawn here so i think our best bet is to actually push onto this pawn he could push past so that it's a nice pass pawn that would make sense for them for me taking the pawn would be okay because then that gets rid of it but he's actually captured so that's like um, you know the difference between the rookie and the uh, the beginner and the intermediate that we're talking about that was a good example there because pushing the pawn down would have given them a lovely pass pawn we would then have to contend with that and those are the smallest differences in the understanding of in between intermediate and beginner oh I shouldn't have put my queen there actually it's behind the knight rook sorry I should have put it here. I was too busy talking. We do have an X-ray through to his bishop, which doesn't. Well, it has protection now, so let's grab here and let's just put an X-ray through to his rook. But we've got a problem. Well, not a problem per se, but his knight is probably going to challenge our knight now because this um, rook is behind us, and I really want to get my queen off of the line of this attack. So I could attack his knight. Yeah. Not that I'm going to take it, but just moving it off of the threat of this rook here. It's got a fork. But we do have a check, so it's not much of a fork because we've got a check on the king. And we haven't got a flight square for our king. So we have to be careful and mindful of that type of situation. We could go for a queen exchange because his knight is on our queen. So we could go here, looking to exchange. Got to be mindful, his rook can come down but we can take. His knight takes. His queen doesn't have to take, always remember that. So we're going to see if he wants to go for the exchange. If not, fair dues, but uh, seems appropriate for us. Our king needs a flight square of some type, or else we'll get back from a checkmated. But we have covered up the fact that we uh, we were okay. We've got the rook here. If he decides to bring the rook down to win a tempo or whatever, he's probably thinking, well, how can I put some pressure here? I could bring my rook down, but he brings his rook down. But our queen just takes the queen. What else is he thinking? How do I get my knight to this this square? It's, I think the believe in this square is weak, yeah, it's challenged, it's gone off. So, it, was that a mistake? Yeah, was that a mistake? Because so our knight can come here, looking to block off. Our knight can go here, blocking the rook off. Our rook 
can attack the knight but then his knight would take the rook so we could push the pawn up just to get that out of the way queen could attack the rook rook really wants to come down here or maybe across maybe down but his queen is opposite our king so what can he get to support this um, attack only one that could is maybe the knight jumping here 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 I'm going to attack the rook because there's nothing supporting it at the moment and he has gone for that attack so his queen is looking to come here to get the back ranker but we can put a check on his king and we're actually on his knight so he loses the knight a lonely king queen is quite dangerous in its own right so it's not saying we've won anything but we're hopefully trying to demonstrate the difference between beginner thinking and intermediate level thinking in terms of what it is that you're actually looking to attack and take off the board I think this game was a really good example of that so that we say oh and they've resigned so we'll have a look at the analysis on that we go back and it's not to say well, the gauge bar is probably going to be um, against us but we'll have a look so we push through the center I came through and as always looking to attack a piece that's the quintessential concept attack a piece try and get pieces off the board strategically yeah so if it's of benefit to yourself then go for it over keeping tension so again we capture the knight here we want to reduce down we want the opponent to have less pieces on the board because I don't know how good they are and the more pieces they've got on the board the more chances they have of working them together and um, getting a checkmate on us or taking off higher higher level pieces so they've pushed through the center again they've gone for the attack process like we talked about yeah but is it appropriate? Is it improving their position? So the capture, capture, so they've got the two pawns in the center. But now we can attack the king and take the bishop off the board. So it all seems pretty straightforward. If you have a look at the pawn structure now, so at the intermediate level type thing, probably start looking at, well, when I do take a piece off the board, where, especially if it's pawn sort of um, situation, it's having a look at, well, where are my pawns going to be situated towards the end game yeah so if you need them for the end game you need you definitely need to have them in appropriate positions linked up together as best possible or having pieces supporting them so the late development of our opponents pieces as you can see they've just got the queen out at the moment and um, we don't have any out at the moment either so we're looking at trying to improve that with appropriate targeting so we target the knight gauge bar is showing um, black as um, winning at the moment yeah so I wasn't really expecting it to show that we were winning until later on and so now we're looking to block off this um, diagonal potentially for any bishop attack also the pawn pushing down on here and then developing the knight looking for the knight to get some free reign and get some movement and attacking gauge bar is still showing black as winning at the moment because it's like we're basically doing a, a robodope type thing we're not really doing anything major so we bring the bishop back just waiting to see what the opponent does yeah so once the opponent runs out of their their punching their attacking that's when we can strike so they're attacking the pawn here and we push the pawn up and then they attack this pawn and then we push the pawn on it's at this stage here where um, I've not seen what the gauge bar will do but I'm assuming that the gauge bar should go in our favour after this particular move because like we said I think the pawn could potentially have moved down or even kept the tension if it wanted I suppose but I think pushing down would have been better for them 
and they capture and as you can see the gauge bar has gone slightly up um, towards us favor favoring us a little bit then it's come back down a little bit <laughs> so, yeah, so we capture but we're in a better position better state especially looking at the gauge bar now it's creeping up slowly towards us being in a better position um, better state so they attack our queen and I, I went the wrong way personally Wait, what's it say yeah exactly it's, I should have gone that way yeah so I did have a bit of a little bit of a twitch going on there so we're captured yeah so capturing appropriately makes sense uh, black's still winning really even the smallest of um, details and we x-ray through onto their rook and we decided well let's take the queen off of the line of the attack of the rook and again black is winning yeah so throughout this um, I felt okay with the moves that we were making but when they've got a fork like this it's um, it's quite key so yes they're still winning and then we go for the exchange says that's a nice move but that was the mistake and you know what I didn't even see that I didn't even see that did I oh you know evaluation is so good you know especially when you see stuff like this and you kick yourself afterwards you go why did I not make that move because I know I didn't make that move I went for the rook didn't I and that was a winning move look at that a knight for free we knew there was something wrong with him not taking but then we were getting all fancy <laughs> oh dear yeah taking it up to the intermediary level in your own mindset you just got to basically look at improving um, seeing stuff and trying not to miss stuff as best possible I miss stuff all the time I keep saying it but it is so true and this is case in point here even though I didn't feel there was anything wrong with what we were doing now at this point here once they hadn't done that I felt that we had a slight advantage even coming for the rook here I felt there was a slight advantage just a little worry that um, we didn't have a flight square but their queen didn't have anything supporting the attack in front of the king our rook was able to circumvent the attack here so I didn't really see a big problem with that okay so yeah with the rook capturing then we captured so we're back in that same state because at the end of the day we can actually come here and which is that's what we actually did but we could have got the knight earlier okay so and then we grabbed and then they resigned so it's really good doing your evaluations especially if you're wanting to move from being a beginner into say like an intermediate level and you are going to make mistakes um, you've got to expect the mistakes but play a little bit better and spot the smallest of things against what your opponent is doing and if you think well that was like a more of a beginner move yeah like this move here it's the smallest of detail I mean the evaluation is not showing any major it's just showing a slight increase in betterment for ourselves yep so that's the smallest of details from that game there I says well that might give us the in and from that moment on my psych psychology about the game was well I'm going to try and take advantage of that smallest of mistakes that they've made and then I move my queen to this wrong side here <laughs> it happens but if you want to develop just keep on plodding away and keep on keep the basics looking at trying to take pieces off the board strategically because if the opponent hasn't got any pieces there cannot be any war okay nice and steady uh, I like to do this one captures Nice and simple. Mm. Let's attack the queen with a smaller piece. Oh, 
was playing casually. Just push through the center. Just push past. The further up the board we can get it, the better. Could have looked for an exchange, but I would he would have got the 20 pointer. My king would have had to take my queen. So we he's probably still trying to go for that. Takes takes. Yeah. If I bring my bishop here it can support if anything happens. That's what I'm thinking. Anyway. Oh, he's playing very cagely. Okay, develop the knight. So we can go on castle, king safety, I think. I've just got to watch Philip. Like I say, he's very wily. Very skillful. Let's castle. Let's keep that tidy. What is he going to take? No. So he's keeping tension. But now I've got my bishop supporting and my rook supporting my queen, I can take. He doesn't have to exchange, he can take the pawn with the queen, yes, which he does do. So we're going to be playing a long game, it looks like. Okay, I'm going to move my bishop, or am I going to move the rook? For a discover check on his queen. Let's just do a discover check on the queen, we like to practice those. Does love doing these type of sort of moves, you know, the queen condensing around the king area. It's gone into the line of our bishop, so a smaller piece attacking a higher piece can't be wrong. This bishop here is not protected at the moment, anyway, and the rook is on there. It's gone back to protect the bishop. Let's get this bishop activated. I'm going to attack the bishop here. May just push the pawn down. And these are not assisted tools. I'm using arrows just as instructional type things because the videos I'm creating, I'm hoping one day maybe somebody finds them useful. So it comes down. We could attack the queen because we would win the bishop back if his queen takes. So I'm going to go here because the rook can take his bishop. Maybe I should have looked at that further, but it looks pretty nice. <laughs> Is it a good position? I think it's an all right position, yeah. So he does take, can we grab? But, but oh no, knight blocker. But we've got the knight that can exchange. So that's not too much of a problem really. So let's grab here. He is looking for this pawn with his rook and his queen. So we have to be a little bit mindful of that, don't we? I think we can circumvent that by ever going for an exchange. Could go for the exchange, his queen takes, pawn takes, then his rook takes, but then our rook took goes back. And then the bishop's on, the bishop could go that way, I'm going to try that, yeah. It looks a bit odd because he's going to win a pawn there, but I think we, we have a better position, we can get the pawn back, but with a better position, with the bishop maybe potentially putting a check on the king here potentially attacking this pawn here with our bishop some sort of scenario like that eventually getting the rook activated also we're going to be powering onto this pawn as well but for now I think that doesn't look too bad queen takes pawn takes rook takes 
bishop here I think something like that but like I say the calculation may change if I see something better oh Philip he's oh I tell you honestly honestly so this is a um, it's not he's coming for this pawn here it's not really going for the bishop because the bishop's protected and the bishop does have an escape you know there's a nice there's a nice movement here hmm could bring the rook here to attack the queen and then the queen takes the pawn because it's hunting pawns so that it gives us our rook a little bit of space here how I, I you know there's also a bishop here I do love those moves you know I'm trying them out bishop takes and if the king takes there then our queen gets his rook yeah because he's gone for a discovered check on our queen hasn't he with the rook so we could do that I like to practice these things because this is the type of stuff that you see when you do your evaluations of your games and when you look at the the higher level players sometimes they do these sort of quirky moves where you go well you've got that piece but I could have got that piece in a simpler way or in a different way you've ended up in the same type of position that I would have but I think that's this is a quite a nice touch for me to try and practice it I'm not saying it's working but it's nice to try and practice it in this arena it's a safe arena club members if it doesn't work it doesn't work I fall flat on my face but we've got a check so he has to do something about the check and if he just moves his king then obviously we're going to get like not checkmate but the queen's still taking the rook so he has to do something oh and he's resigned damn so sticking with the intermediate four processes simple direct moves to remove pieces from the board strategically the key word being strategically within the interim intermediate advanced up to the expert level being able to play against that level these are the types of things that you need to have in your back pocket it's attacking where it's beneficial for yourself let's grab this pawn it's a free gift pawn is on the knight queen is obviously going to take a situation here where, where if we do take queen takes back queen looks like it's in a strong position but in keeping with the mantra the less pieces on the board for the opponent the less pieces they have to put together to actually attack you and formulate an attack so we'll take it off the board Let's attack this pawn while they're trying to formulate their attack because at the moment they've just got the queen out. We do have space to go and castle. But I was just going to mention the bishop coming down to attack here. A smaller piece attacking a higher piece can't be wrong so a, a little pawn attacking the queen can't be resisted he could still take because his bishops on our queen but our queen can still take and still be protecting the pawn here although he does have his knight that can double up but then if his knight did that the pawn would take anyway so there would be no point there So the queen's moved out of the way, 
it's actually blocking our castle in. So for that cheek, a smaller piece attacking the higher piece, again, can't be wrong. develop the night and they're moving dead quick so when they move quickly nine times nine times out of ten when I'm playing a game and they move quickly it's like they've got something sewn up they've got a strategy I suppose his idea is he's got his rook opposite our queen could move the queen off now that we've got protection with the knight but I suppose we do lose the pawn so we'll probably take him with the king. Whoa. It's not done any of that. That's interesting. Taking pieces off the board is fairly key to me. Probably get my king safety. I'm capturing. Although this pawn is going to be doubled up, isn't it? So a smaller piece attacking a higher piece so that we potentially can go and castle. Again, can't be wrong. Just have a two on one here. So it's going to be up a pawn. Hmm. If we attack the knight, the knight takes the pawn. Bishop can come out and attack. Attack this pawn, it's got no protection. But I still think... Hmm. Develop an attack, so do a bit of a morphe. We've got a piece under attack, we can put a piece under attack here. But if his knight takes, then... I don't know if that works now. <laughs> now I'm looking at it. If we take, then his rook is protecting this pawn, but it's not protecting this pawn because this has an x ray through to this pawn here. Let's grab this. A smaller piece attacking a higher piece. It's not got a safe square to go to here, so he has to go back. So there's a lot of smaller pieces attacking higher pieces in this particular game and that's the whole idea behind the concept, the one concept which is attack, 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 simple direct moves to take pieces off the board strategically. These threats that we're putting onto these higher level pieces, they have to move them, yeah? I mean, we have magic, I think, potentially capturing here. Uh, is there anything else? The knight does have this nice move here with a fork. But do I really want to open his rook up onto this pawn? I'm taking this pawn here. Keep it simple. I don't want to over egg it. It looked like a nice fork. And it's come back to bite me. But bring the king up, protecting. He is moving very fast. We were looking at getting this pawn, but this rook is protecting here. So, might as well take this bishop off. Wow, he's moving like it's a blitz match or something. Okay, so. Knight does have an attack on the rook. Potentially, but then the rook comes and attacks this pawn. We're going to have to support the pawn here. I don't 
don't think I'm happy with that. No. Could attack his rook with a rook. Uh, which rook? This rook or this rook? And then does he just come here with his rook supporting? Do we take them? Take to reduce down. Then he takes and he's owning the file. Bring whichever rook again to the position. Looking for the exchange. And then it's a knight against the bishop. He's got double pawns here, which is good for us. We have a flexible knight. I think probably moving this rook because he's got the pin here. Nah, I think we'll go with this. Let's challenge the rook. If he goes there, looking to own, we capture. We've been through that, so it's a simple process. Let's capture. seen this that's marvelous if we went there his bishop would take and then our kings away from the rook yeah, very good good touch good touch okay good job I stopped to think let's bring the rook here <laughs> those are the types of things I played it through a bit probably too quickly in my head going for the exchange but I'm still okay with the position that we're in so long as I'm happy with the position I'm okay so long as I don't have to use any fancy tactics or anything like that so I think the bishop will take the knight because the knight's then going to be able to dance around a bit if it doesn't Ooh, he's not done he's just blocked the position that the knight can go to hmm that's an interesting one. Just come round and attack the bishop. Bishops attack the king. It's moving very quick. Let's move here. Fourteen minutes. That's a lot. That's a lifetime. Okay, so we've got an X-ray. We've got an X-ray with the rook onto this pawn here. to play with that. I'm going to move the knight across so it's still got some play. He's moving so quick it's unreal. Let's move the king down. He's looking for some devastation. I'm hoping as usual an opponent playing really fast in a long play game that they're going to make a mistake because they can't be thinking of oh, forward plan strategy properly as far as I can see you, you can't do it so he's pushed let's attack this bishop it's got no protection on it's blocked well it's not blocked I suppose it can go up here and then we've got push on to so then it has to get out of the way but then his rook gets taken. Ah, I see. So we've got the fork. So I'm, I'm fingers crossed this speed has made them fail now because they don't look like they're in a good position now.
when you're playing a longer play game you really want to take your time over it and um, sort of savour those moments I mean not like waiting ages and ages to make a move but you know when you're moving too quickly in my head I'm just thinking you cannot be making the right moves it looks good initially but then later on in the game it starts to tell and in this game it looks like it started to tell because one of these pieces is getting taken off the board for free so now we have a material advantage do we have a positional advantage I'd have to say yes I'd have to say yes, a simple pawn push here, defending. We've got a pass pawn here, a half semi pass pawn there. He's got a pass pawn, well, semi pass pawn here. I expected the rook to come down, but again, it's a simple movement of the king up. Taking time, not rushing it, not trying to blast my way through, it's not a blitz match. King simply takes. So it's attacking the king now. There's not much hope for this rook actually, really. Just go up, support the pawn. These pawns are looking to blast down onto the king here so that it releases the protection. And this rook's looking to put some sort of check on the king. Well, it's got an x ray through to this pawn here, so I can't move. I was going to move my knight, can't move my knight really. I'd have to push this pawn up to get rid of that. I'll bring the king down to simply attack the rock. Let's just bring the king down. Just keep it simple. I'm trying not to over-egg it now. He does have a poor majority on this side, so that could be fairly crucial in his development. But if we can get the rook away from this position, yeah, so he has to go across. Just move this pawn out of the way now. And he's got x-ray through to this one as well. We can always put a check on our king to start pressuring this pawn here. So we've got to be careful. Ooh. Suddenly he's making some nice stuff. He's block he does all the right blocking because our knight was potentially going here to protect this pawn. So he's doing he's doing that knight quite nicely. Mm hmm. This king is safe. Mm hmm. Let's move my king back here. I can assume he's just going to put another check on. Might come this way this time. Go for the pawn attack. Let's move up. Mr. Speed, oh, let's just get a little bit so we can start jamming his king in. Maybe even come round for this pawn here. Oh, and that's beautiful. It's almost like let us in, really. We get a moment to release the knight for a second, but well, I think we're going to have to go back again. Oh, oh, interesting. He can take the pawn because it's over in a few moves. Position versus speed.
Yes, like it. Okay, so it's come up, so we've got options. We can move here, we can move there. I think attacking the two pawns seems favorable for us because at the same token, it's opening this little baby here. I think that's over with now. It's like checkmate, I believe. I'll take my time and save at this moment. Yes. Okay, let's have a look at the analysis on that one. So, got slightly annoyed with the speed of the opponent. Um, it did look good and it look, did look ferocious. Let's put the evalu evaluation on. Let's go here. And it's appreciating the, the value of taking time to find appropriate moves. So they push through here onto this pawn, attacking a pawn. We captured, they captured. We captured. What's it saying? Saying the queen move. No, let's capture. It's really wanting this queen move, isn't it? We went for the pawn, and that put black in a bit of favour. We pushed onto the cake queen. Still showing black as in a more advantage on that side so we push through smaller piece attacking a higher piece still black is in favor developing the knight black is in favor crikey then we look for the queen exchange but it's not having any of it we capture black slightly 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 the smallest of advantages still Attacking a higher piece with a smaller piece, drawish. Mm. Still drawish looking. Captured. Attacking the higher piece again with the smaller piece. Yeah, we did think of this fork thing, but I, I, it just didn't feel right. Go there, and then he comes there. But then if I did take, because what, what would be the point, you see? I did see, then it opens up the rook on this file here. So then I'm sat babysitting this pawn. No, I, I don't think I liked it, so yeah, we didn't go with that one. So we captured the pawn here. And doesn't like that bishop move from black. Then we captured. We're starting to show a bit of favour here now. I just want to see this rook exchange stuff. So it doesn't really like... Oh, wrong rook maybe? Why is it the wrong rook? What's that? What's the... Oh, because, because of the pin thing, maybe? Taking it off of the pin? Yeah, maybe so. Okay. So then we grabbed. Grabbed, says that's okay. Yeah. And at that point there, <laughs> I realised if we'd have gone here, that would have been serious trouble. Yeah, look at that. Bishop takes, king takes, and then we get wiped out. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'll go back a bit more, sorry. So we actually went here. It's not too big an advantage. Then we attacked the bishop. What move was it saying before that? Attacking King up Knight. I wanted to get the knight active, didn't I? And then he comes down with his rook. But we're showing in favour here. Somehow it felt like we were because his pieces were getting more condensed in as the game was going. And then that pawn move allowed the fork. And I think it's yeah. Look at that. Oh, it was high up before then even from that pawn move look attacking whoa nice one okay so positive targeting but then we did have the issue of this this pawn here with the x-ray through from his rook 
the B pawn. King attacking, king moving up, king attacking the rook, moving the pawn up, trying to get rid of the X ray, and then realizing that now we can make our way up towards their king to put some pressure on. I think we got lucky in it, well, looking at the gauge bar, it's not showing any luck there, but um, I was feeling this constant pressure on this pawn. But because the king then moved, we could then start putting checks on the king. So that gave us the in really. And then at that point, we, we could let that pawn go. Yeah, we had options. We could have gone there or there. We did have those choices. But we chose to go for the pawns type thing. So up we went. But at the same token, it's also got this key square and that's saying that they should have put a check on us would it made of much of, of a difference so we would have captured won't we and if we're still putting checks on if we capture down here we're getting rid of this poor majority that he's got if he goes down and it's sort of prolonging it isn't it yeah But they didn't do that, they did that, and then that was checkmate. Excellent. So using small calculation, not too big calculation, and basically just targeting. Targeting the higher pieces with the smaller pieces, and really looking at getting the pieces off the board as best possible. And that's it really. I mean, it's the same concept that we use at the beginning. It's the same concept we're using at intermediate. And it's the same concept that we're using in the advanced and expert levels. And we use it against those levels. If you're not an expert level, still try and use these concepts against those expert levels or the advanced levels or the intermediate levels. It does work. You just have to have faith in it and just keep constantly practicing it. I seem to scrabble around when I'm playing uh, this player. I'm going to see if I can actually get a win. See if I can get a win today. 7 3 at the minute. They're winning 7, I have 1 3. Might have been some draws in there or something. <laughs> okay, let's see what we've got. Bishops come out. I think simple development. Oh, they're really fast as well. Okay, let's just get out of the way. Let's hope that they make a positional mistake now. I'm not going to get flustered. Just play the game that I play. Need to kingside castle myself. Look how quickly they've castled. It's on my night. It's on my night. On pass on coming. Yes. I'm just gonna get with the night. It's really fast. I wonder if people think I'm fast. Because <laughs> look, these guys play really quick. It's landed on my bishop. It's landed on my knight for free. Oh my life. Okay, that's a that's a gift. That's a gift. Let's try and keep this advantage now then. Yeah, they're going to play mad now. Um, queen, queen, discovered area, yeah, queen. Take them with the rook. Yeah, okay, they're playing, they're playing, look well, like they're playing mad now, so I think we need to probably use that against them. Can we not just castle now? King safety is key for me. Let's castle and just take a breath. Because they're playing super speed now and they're going to make me make a mistake. So I need to just maybe put an x ray through here. Still playing fast. Just um, attack as we would do. Don't want to exchange. Double the double the pawns up. 
is actually on my bishop, my knight is protecting. Okay, let's double the pawns. Okay, back rank stuff now. Attacking the bishop. That makes sense, doesn't it? Maybe. Or do we attack his rook? Attack, 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 attack the rook. Good time. I mean, this player does not take a breath. They actually just really whip out the moves. Um, knight, knight, bishop, bishop, rook. Rook attacking the bishop. Is that going to be any good? Dun, 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 dun. Well, do we want to come around the front here? Let's see him. Oh, they've resigned. Yeah, they moved too fast. <laughs> they, let, they let that piece go. That's a, that's surprising. Okay, nice one. Nineteen ninety two as well. But you know, like I say, it, you can play on this site and get really high. I'm not saying it's um, the players are weak on here. It's just yeah, if you keep playing and playing and playing, um, and you're a decent player, your rating's going to go up. It don't mean you're a master or anything. Okay, playing as black. So yeah, we're not wanting to be arty, we're wanting to be effective, efficient and dynamic with our moves. Like this person says, come with a scud missile looking to attack our knight. So it could be a gift, a Greek gift, but we're going to grab this pawn here. So attack, attack, capture. As an intermediary level person, you're wanting to be look at, looking at calculations if we calculate that we take this here the queen is obviously going to come here with a check and then our knight can come here but he's going to win the knight back because the pawn is going to drop here yeah so are we wanting to go for that sort of situation or do we want to do something different options because it's equal at the moment I'm going to capture and then the queen gets the um, the knight back maybe or shall we just bring it here let's bring the knight back and then at least we've um, yes yeah, so as we said the pawn's coming down here is there a different way of working this particular maneuver it's a set player type thing so the opponent's feeling really good that they've got the knight back so i'm going to bring our bishop here attacking this pawn queen's going to take that seems the foregone conclusion so it's all equal at the minute we're plus one because we've captured this pawn now something's happened to the screen that was weird hmm okay so he's brought his queen down we now have this but we've got a check on at the minute from his uh, queen and he's also on our bishop so Bringing our queen here means we lose the bishop. So in essence, that's a nice strike from the opponent because there's nothing else that can go in the way to actually block the queen from actually, apart from our queen, but then he takes the bishop. So we can't save the bishop. So how do we move on from there? His king hasn't castled, our king hasn't castled. So let's just move our queen here and then smaller piece attacking a higher piece. So he's got something to think about. And as we try and mosey on our pieces up through the center because he hasn't developed any other pieces so we can try and take advantage of that so as we mentioned in the beginner stage well it's a smaller piece attacking the higher piece can't be wrong and he's now attacking our rook so bring the knight through the queen is doing all the work at the moment as we mentioned in the beginning stage, don't panic when you feel like you, you know, you've lost the piece. This is your best opportunity to actually create havoc. Yep. So, what do we want to do from here? We do have options. We do have the bishop coming across here. It's an attack mode again. Cross towards the king area. Our queen has sights of being here, but currently, yep, so they're just attacking, attacking, attacking. So I'm going to grab the pawn with the knight, getting closer towards his king area. 
getting closer towards a deadly square here as queen's protecting at the moment bishop's now attacking our knight so he's, he's wanting us to go and do some sort of uh, major attack oh excuse me we could bring the bishop here for the queen to take the bishop so the bishop is off of that line and then the knight can go here and then put a check on the king and get the rook something like that so i'm actually going to do that small potatoes but big rewards because the knight might not even go for the rook i may may get a good position with my queen yes yeah, so he's actually gone for that might get a good position with my queen as well be seen as the queen the, his queen is offline so we'll go with that with a check it's always the case of never panic if you're going to be down pieces yeah I'm going to grab the bishop can grab that now and a momentary check for a, uh, a split second just to uh, give them something to think about his knight can block there he can move his king whichever his queen then is going to be greedy for oh he's not he's actually brought the queen back with a check on my king mm. well that means I have to capture so he saw the danger that we were trying to create for them it's got a two on one so we can push this pawn onto the knight and just move the king out of the way let's attack the knight taking it off of the line of the attack from a rook just move this here because he's got the diagonal with his bishop at the moment so he's got like loads of pieces and it's a matter of now just jostling a few and we should be in a fairly decent position once we establish control of a file with the rooks he's doing squid missile work now which is like just constantly coming down attacking here because he has nothing else to think about just move the king up to make it a fighting king active proactive and as we said once we get this file here I think it might be potentially all over for our opponent it might not look like it at this moment in time but we're building oops excuse me we're building our attack process it's brought his knight through supporting the knight here could attack the rook rook comes down attacking the king really wanting either his knight to come here to put a check on the king if my king goes up because he's got so many pieces on the board it's difficult for them to think well what what is the actual checkmate so it's moved this rook completely out of the way so that gives us chance to start moving pawns up so he's got knights he's got bishops but how does he actually get a checkmate that is the question because the nice pieces to have but what, what are they actually doing what purpose are they serving to push this pawn here while we're thinking looking to maybe potentially push here yeah that type of thing because we have a pawn majority just here on this side so now he's attacking so I'm assuming that's a mistake because we can put a check on the king here uh, with no threat from any piece at the moment so intermediary level even at the basic beginner level as well we showed that when you're down pieces it doesn't mean that you've lost the game it's just how you then mobilize your pieces so we could attack the knight here but his bishop is protecting we could go and attack the bishop but his knight is protecting that square so there's no real point in actually moving across there we can't go and put a check on the king because his knights are protecting this square could attack this pawn but his knight is protecting this square could make the king active but the knight is probably going to get a fork on one of our rooks yeah he could come here with his knight so what options do we have we were planning on just moseying these pawns up just do that while we're thinking because we do have a pawn majority on this side and the rooks come down and he's got he's got this pawn here but we could get this pawn with our active king 
unless again like I say he's looking to put a check on but he's not so with the pawn majority that we got we could actually take the pawn or we could push up and lock down so that it's a pass pawn advanced, advanced thinking is push there his rook takes this pawn doesn't take the pawn so does that weaken something before we do that yeah let's capture here active king like I say I think the knights are probably going to get a fork on my king and my rook but we're getting closer towards their king now and the danger zone is here but his knight is protecting this square at the minute so if we move to the other side then we might get the danger zone which is there because then the king gets checkmated so I think he's going to do rook here for a check on the king so we're trying to work our pieces together to try and crunch the king well you see how we're working our pieces that's a nice move so the king doesn't have to panic too much it can come across here but I'm just thinking is there, the, is there a fork? no not really do I have to panic about that move? again his rook can always come and put a check on us anyway so and he's got the dark square bishop but he can't get out at the moment this knight wants to get active somehow but it can't so simple thing is probably putting a check here or, or there whichever getting closer towards his king bringing the rook king here okay let's just move the king because we could have brought it back 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 and maybe brought the king safely over into this corner here but we want a fighting king we want an active king because we do have options of yeah so he's um, putting checks 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 now so I think it's probably safe zone is probably coming here and he might look to exchange off his rook because he doesn't want us to get any checks on him Oh. But checkmate and that really was a good example of let's look at the analysis that was a good example of what we're trying to talk about within the intermediary level even from the beginner level as well um, is never giving up just because you lose a, a minor piece or a piece doesn't mean you've lost the game let's put the evaluation stuff on okay so at this moment we're currently winning and the gauge bar is showing a lot of favour for us on this side we bring the knight back and then the bishop move it doesn't like everything else it seems to like it's basically saying bring the knight through here so it's expecting the knight to be taken hmm okay I think it's because of that aspect of the queen being able to take the bishop really yeah so there the queen comes here yeah so at this point here now white is in favor so we were winning up until that point and we probably didn't need to panic so much maybe about bringing the bishop out to actually come and target just develop the knight that's something to remember nice and simple but for these these particular examples that i'm showing these are ideal positions for people learning how to play chess the positions that I'm getting myself in are realistic positions they are realistic errors that I have seen in many games but it's learning how to deal with those look at the gauge bar great gauge bar has gone right down there for white so now we were trying to jostle our way through targeting where appropriate and doing some lovely calculations especially this bishop move here and it really doesn't like that it's saying well the two two or three moves away from checkmate but the opponent has got to see it because I'm not playing an engine if I am playing an engine then they will see these opportunities to be able to win the games quickly but uh, if you play the human it's very hard to you know for them to find these types of um, situations so the knight goes through puts the check on the king White is still favourable, a lot favourable, yeah, so they should have won this game quite easily really. So we put a check on the king, queen comes back. We didn't expect the queen coming back actually, but uh, seeing as it did, we captured. 
so White is out and out winning because of the material that they've got on the board. One key thing to always genuinely understand about engines when you're doing your evaluation is they like material. So the gauge bar is showing going crazy for material because White has got all that material. But as we've mentioned in the beginner tutorial, you can have as many pieces on the board as you want but if they are not in appropriate positions or they're not working their pieces together then they're tantamount to being useless so we target the knight attack the knight so we're in attack mode now so the king's attacking the knight again and we're not gaining any advantages whatsoever in terms of the evaluation but within our position we are so we're protecting the pawns looking for ideal positions now with the rooks look and we did mention if we get to own a file with our rooks then it's potentially all over for our opponent that's how confident we had to be we had to be have that confidence in there or else we wouldn't follow it through so the rook comes down attacks so it's almost over, the um, white should have won this. And we double up. And that move there is saying it's a checkmate in one. And all they had to do was bring their bishop here and it would have been checkmate. But the opponent didn't see it. Yep, yeah, we're playing humans. Okay, so it's something to keep in mind but we were a piece down so we had well many pieces down so we had to do something and that's a glorious position bishop taking it i didn't even see that even when i was playing so and obviously the player didn't play so you play what you play and going forward we're going to be mindful about getting our pieces put under pressure and basically not wanting to be a piece down because it is hard work. So we continue on and we just want to see at what stage really the, the whole game changed. White is still definitely winning and we started pushing these pawns up while we were thinking of trying to get a better position. And we're still dancing with this king which really should have been it should have been all over like it should the white the dark square bishop should have um, basically wiped us out but we're gaining advantage and then we lost the advantage by doing the pawn push and i thought well push pawn pushing would be an ideal situation past pawns should be pushed but it's saying take the pawn here with your nice aggressive king for that lovely position Hmm, okay, so we gave the advantage back to white, but the opponent didn't take it, so we grabbed, but it's not a big advantage this time. And this one is, but I, oh, there's me thinking, oh, you, we had the position, but I was thinking, well, if I take there, his knight's going to take, but I've got my rook here, and I take there, and that would have been checkmate. <gasps> Ah, you see, these realistic positions, these are what happened. Yep, all that needed to happen was that, there, and then there. But, my brain said, oh no, I can't go there because the knight's going to take the rook. And I didn't go any further. So when you're doing your calculations in the intermediate level, you have to go that one, two, three, four step further. Yep. Okay, so we came across and lost the advantage again. And we were actually talking about that situation, you know, with the king being closed down. And uh, well, we worked very hard to get another position, moving the king across, moving the king across again. And then we eventually got it. But we had to work a little bit too hard for that. So, all in all, this game really showed. For intermediary thinking, it's about looking further with your calculation, not trying to drop pieces, um, not leaving pieces hanging with your captures. So capturing so that you're in an appropriate position and that it's a benefit to yourself and 
you're now used to how the pieces work and move and operate so now you can develop a little bit of a calculation and evaluation of the game so that then you can really pressure the king area we did okay within this game here but there were opportunities for the opponent to win and there were opportunities for us to win um, um, we were lucky in terms of being able to keep pushing and eventually get the win but for me it's about the quality of the game and the quality of the gate this game needed work so let me just capture here it's brought that so I'm gonna just go here we'll check on the king <clears throat> Going for the bishop exchange, nice one. So it's not a super blitz thing, so I'll still try to look for a decent position if I can. And castle. Makes sense. King safety. Looking to get the dark square bishop into the old Fianchetto position. Knight can attack the queen while they're thinking about that. Say to, um, they say that you should sort of use the opponent's time to calculate what you plan to do next etc but as I've mentioned in the beginners tutorial realistically your calculation the opponent might not doesn't have to do your calculation so you can spend quite a lot of time doing calculation and it's almost like not saying a waste of time just bringing the rook here which we were going to do no matter where he was going to go uh, so now he's moving fast so he's done like a big calculation based on his research but the knight can actually go anywhere now and if only I had a check on his queen I'd be able to take his queen off the board but I could actually come around here to attack the bishop or go and attack his rook because we have the check with the rook here so I'm actually going to go for his rook because it's the higher piece so that's a simple example of the x-ray through so that works quite nicely for us in this sense doesn't mean you've won the game just because you're potentially winning a higher piece because your position still might be shot because he still has this diagonal coming through here yeah his bishop can put a check on the king but it's not an ultimate check it's not like a checkmate or anything but you know he's still got something that he can do to counter attack So yeah, calculation is the the worry of many people learning how to play chess. You know, they feel you have to have a, a memory like a computer to say, well, if they go here, then they're going to do this, do that and the other. And when you're studying openings, um, openings from past bygone eras, you know, the Sicilian defences, the Nidoffs, all that type of stuff. 
it's basically you're going based on calculations that have been done many years ago by a said person that person's name then has been given to that and at the end of the day your opponent doesn't have to move like that so learning those openings gives you a good idea as to what your pieces can do and the potential placement of your pieces but when your opponent suddenly doesn't move like that oh sorry I missed my go into it so I can take here because I've still got the check on yeah and the knight's still defending the rook and the knight's still got the threat of this um, attacking this rook here so potentially we're looking maybe to support the rook coming up at some stage but he's got to deal with the check so maybe the knight is going to come and defend yeah so that's the key thing your opponent does not have to do what you think they're going to do so when you're studying openings really do them with an open mind yeah and that's what I've done I've studied those types of openings and I've come to this conclusion you know when I've actually played actual games online played them um, over the board and then people don't do what you expect them to do and you think well I've studied this opening and this opening says that there's they should do this to you know to be a strong move and they're not you know they've not done it so that's what's made me ardently fight towards not overregging your calculation and just wait for the opponent to make their move. Yeah, expect the unexpected. So he's moved. So like we say, we don't want to be too greedy. I think I'm going to just take this rook now. He's done that, but that's not a clever thing because we can get his queen. So that's the whole that was the whole idea behind that that fork situation. Okay, so they've resigned. Okay, block through the center. Defend the pawn, but uh, also developing the knight. Attack a pawn here with the knight, also developing the knight. It's coming through the centre, so we can capture, keeping it simple. It's pushed through the centre here now, so we can actually double the attack up because the knight is currently stopping the queen from taking the knight. So we've got two pieces on this pawn. You can expect the bishop to come here to defend the pawn. Does that give us time to then bring our pawn out or capture? So with this move here, now he has got the um, the knight here in this in his sights. So we can bring our knight around to capture the pawn back. So plus one at this moment. So it is a set play opening that white is playing here. So there are advantages that they can gain potentially coming here but it blocks his white square bishop bishop coming out attacking the knight here or the queen coming right down to the corner here so he's going for a horizontal attack on the knight because if our knight takes then his queen takes so we could bring our bishop here to defend the knight but it's blocking this pawn so not too sure whether we're going to do that could bring the bishop here just to where uh, develop so that we can go on queenside castle So if we do do that, then his bishop potentially can come here, put in a 2 on one We can then push the pawn here to defend the knight. So we have options. We can also bring our queen out here. Could attack the queen. Because the queen's not going to drop here. Because the bishop will take. So a smaller piece attacking a higher piece in this situation seems appropriate. So I'm going to um, smaller piece attack the queen. Okay. 
Okay, so we do have a discovered check by pushing the pawn up and the bishop then would be attacking the queen. Always mindful what can come in front of the queen here. So I'm going to push the pawn because a smaller piece attacking a higher piece again. Can't be wrong. So if you see the way I'm developing at the minute, it is just about targeting, attacking. We've had a look at the situations and we're going well. We're making this queen work really hard at the moment. So now we could actually take the knight off the board because our knight here has got support from this pawn. But if we did that, the pawn comes here and then it's on the knight. So then the knight can't move because he's got a check from his queen onto our king. So we could bring the bishop here to protect in readiness also to go and castle for king's safety because that's a key thing so plus one at the moment but it doesn't mean you've won anything just because you plus one the position on the board at the minute he has pressure x-raying through to our king he has the option of attacking putting pressure onto our queen so we'll castle keeping it safe yes he's got the scud miss out but i would rather get my king to safety first because like i say there's a lot of pressure on this poor knight here now we can consider capturing the knight or him capturing our knight whichever way but then our rook is going to be facing his queen and his king x-raying through so that's a pressure in its own right against white so it's come down anyway attacking so like i say we do have the options we have options here obviously the pawn just drops so that's probably not a good one Knight can come here attacking, but then the bishop takes the knight, so that's not a good one. Knight can come here. That might be okay, because it's got a safe haven to come back down to here or to here. So let's do that. And it opens the space in front of the king if the queen just goes back one. Obviously the bishop can go in front if the rook attacks. Bishop momentarily is protecting the pawn, so if the queen did come to attack the knight here, then at least we still have the rook check on the king. Which he can defend by just bringing his bishop here. But he's brought his um, king in front, so we can put the pressure onto the queen through to the king. The knight may come to protect, but I think we can continue with the rook attacking the knight with the pin on the king, queen through to the king so he's captured so ah yeah that's nice and clever isn't it that's nice and clever but I think we still maintain the pin you see so if we capture the knight his queen can't come here because we still got the pin through to his king and his queen can't go anywhere so if we were moving really fast we would have had a panic on you know thinking oh my gosh you know I'll take and then he gets an even exchange almost in a sense in fact he probably would have been a piece up or something if he'd have done it that way so maintaining that powerful pressure seeing that potential attack and maintaining that attack for me when I do look at the games, especially beginner, advanced, intermediate, you know, in, intermediate, advanced, even the expert levels, um, there isn't any difference. And this is, I'm sort of trying to get that across because we've covered the beginners where we've got used to the pieces. And before we take the queen, is there anything else? Bishop. No. What we don't want to do is allow that um, dark square bishop to come in front. So we'll capture the queen. And lean on 
the king again. Yeah, there's to me there's no difference. I mean, the beginner stage for the concept that we talked about, where we're just capturing pieces, removing pieces off the board, um, so that there's there's no pieces that the opponent can sort of attack you with. That really should be all the way through to the expert level as well. If you're wanting to maintain a good, effective um, play for yourself, we can take this bishop. And when you're playing a game like this, where I'm looking at it more on an intermediary level, to me there's no difference in terms of the beginner level. Yes, the there's a slight difference maybe in the terms of your calculation. You you want you're not wanting to um, you're not wanting to really lose pieces, but you can end up losing pieces because you might miss stuff. But you're trying to attempt to not miss as much as you would have done if you were playing as a beginner. And that's the only difference in the intermediate. You're saying, well, okay, yes, I missed that um, opportunity, so I'm going to try and improve on that next time. But the whole concept about removing pieces from the board strategically for yourself is, it's like gold. It's like gold for us. Okay, so what we do have here, so we're thinking we can put checks, 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 checks. But we don't want to go down that route. We want to find something else to be able to do. Develop another piece. I'm developing the bishop here. Yes, but the king could go down and put a check on. The rook comes back down. So I don't want to waste my moves. Yeah, so to me, there is no difference. There is a, a, a different way of calculating, more calculation to improve your positions so that you're capturing better, so that you're reducing down better. Um, but that's it. So learn the basics, which is from the beginner tutorial, understand the capturing, understanding what the pieces can do, the movements that they can make. Doubling up on this file now. And then from there it's building on that experience and adding a little bit more calculation and evaluation and tactical awareness. Um, for me, our concept is based more on positional play. If I can get a better position on the board, it doesn't matter how many pieces I've got on the board, then that better position is going to give me a better advantage in the game. Tactical awareness is fine, it's okay, you know, if you know what the knight can do, blah, 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 then learn to block that off. I might use some tactical bits sometimes in the games, but realistically I'm more of a, a definitely a positional player. And the positional player plays to my strength, I think, which is like I like to play humanly, you know. Um, tactics are more sort of like playing like a computer. Uh, if if you get my understanding. Some people may go, no it's not, but I believe being a positional player helps you to play more humanly and you, you get to be have a bit more empathy with the game. What have we got here? So we can, got dark square bishop, can put a two on one on this pawn here. Um, give the king some space. Bishop could take, no. Let's just push this pawn up. We don't need to rush it. The worst thing you can do is rush in a game when you feel like you've got an advantage materially. And the worst thing is then losing that material or losing a good position. So currently we've got a pin through onto his king, so his rook is a little bit held to ransom here. His knight is looking for a good space potentially to come and attack the queen. Could go there to attack the queen. This rook is not doing anything at the moment. It ideally wants to come here. So he has to come and attack the queen. But there's nothing protecting this knight. So we could actually take the knight for free. expecting a resignation at this point uh, due to the vast amount of material that we do have against them would I continue as white playing this I probably would because I'd be saying to myself okay they've got all this material but are their pieces working together and yes they've resigned Go 
Well, with the two knights, no problems. So we've got the four knights out. Let's look for a little bit of castling. John's a speedy merchant. Last few games though, I think he's not played um, really super fast against me. He's sort of taken his time, but today he seems to be back on form. Could capture in the middle here, or could just go and castle. Ooh, capturing is as capturing does. Let's capture. King safety. Yep, super speed, super speed. Um, uh, got to protect my knight because he's going to push the pawn down. Super speed. Da, 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 da. Just bring my bishop out, get it off the back. Oh, it's good missile time. Good missile, let's block it. Try and practice what we preach. Well, no trying, I practice what I preach. And if we pushed onto this knight, it's got a two and one here on the pawn, but we've got a two and one ourselves. Let's do that. pushing through the centre here, try and get rid of this pawn, it's probably going to drop actually on the knight, just bring the knight back, attacking the pawn, free up the bishop, I don't think he's going to take, I think he's going to move it now, could go there as well. Oh, I would. Let's go here. Got bishop attacking here. Got bishop attacking the knight. So there's a whole range of stuff going on. Uh, let's go here. Looks like he's wanting to keep protecting this pawn. Is this pawn going to be his saving grace? Uh, let's just see if we can get rid of it. it does capture, yes. So we can take with the queen or take with the knight. Is the knight going to be functional? Take with the knight, save the queen. That's what the knights are for. Knights fight the fight first up. And we can bring the bring the knight back. Attacking the queen and the bishop. That makes sense. Nice fork. Gotta be conscious, don't want to be going down on time with um John. He's, he is a bit faster than me in the end game. It is five games against one at the minute, but still in a few of those games it was like to the wire I've, I've not seen him move so fast in my life he plays fast over the board <laughs> last over the board match we had was a draw in a competition and why it was like bang 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 draw <laughs> um, what's he doing with his queen um, do, 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 do. we could take that bishop let's get rid of that bishop it's annoying me I practice what I preach, I'm not into this keeping this tension malarkey for no reason whatsoever. It's quite obvious, I think, the movements that I make. So when I look at my games, I, I look at them and I go, well, yeah, you did that because you're attacking that, you're attacking that, you're attacking that. Um, so in a few games that I do watch, I go, well, I'm not too sure what they're doing. Bishop can attack, as we can see, the queen. 
so it all makes sense to me when I'm watching the players that I do like watching and observing and researching um, they have this particular style too I know what they're, they're doing yeah there are some games where I question but um, majority of the time I know what they're doing it's it's simple it's to the point Queens come through attacking my bishop attacking my bishop can I reverse it uh, bring the queen here queen's attacking this pawn get a discover check with the rook yeah get a discover check with the rook that makes sense you know we're working on the discover checks and uh, we do like that form is blocking off the attack on the pawn here as you can see our white square bishop can go anywhere really but it's got nothing to actually could attack this bishop could attack the bishop if it attacks the bishop bishop takes and then the rook takes the queen is there something wrong with that I like like I say I like practicing this sort of stuff I did that in the first game with Philip I like to I think that's a nice discover check on the Queen I'm not sure the Queen the Queen can't put anything on my my King it looks like it can't take any pieces not really going to be an advantage because he'll get the bishop back yeah okay just grab the bishop and just grab the queen doubling the pawns in front of the king so that might be a good start for 10 What about Rook Rover? I don't know if the Rook Rover is going to work though because we've got a dark square bishop. Uh, could go up and attack this pawn on the back here. Let's try Rook Rover. I don't think there's much to it but. Five minutes. Not to dilly dally. Oh, he's looking to exchange off. I wanted to do my rook rover. I'm going to put the check. It's gone deep into the corner. I don't want to exchange. I believe there's some pressure on this side here, or towards the king side. So if I stay focused on that, not too much, but you know. And his rook can come down, put a check on, but we're pretty safe. Let's take him. Yes, he's come down dead quick. But well, like I say, the king can just move here. <coughs> if his other rook comes, then the bishop is protecting, I think, quite nicely. Could go around to attack these pawns, but I think by that time, we're going to have some devastation because of our dark square bishop controlling this square here. Yeah, like I said, he's bringing his rook over now to try to cause devastation, but I think it's done. Yes, again. And the knight's coming down real fast, but like I said, that's going to be checkmate, I think. Yes. Okay, just to close out the intermediate tutorial, we'll just do a recap. Of the learning so far. So before we think about jumping onto the advanced level, um, let's have a look back at the beginner level. When we first started on the beginner tutorial, it was take a piece, yep, yeah, where it's given to you. This last video, I'm just going to show a little bit of tension. So I'm going to bring the knight here now supporting the pawn
and the opponent doesn't want to wear any tension and I'm happy and I'm glad for them so I'm celebrating for them let's grab here and I love the way that they're attacking that's what I'm talking about I don't know this player but that is beautiful that's like music to my ears I don't really want it doing to me but this is the type of shock factor that happens to players who practice you know sort of book opening type things yeah I'm not saying this isn't a book opening the opponents doing but they're dealing with what is on the board they're attacking a, hi a higher piece with a lesser piece I'm gonna move the knight back so what we want to do is use our own skills based on what we've learned which is attacking the higher pieces simple direct moves to get pieces off the ball strategically okay now I believe this player has gone a little bit too far now with the pawn pushing because we want to open our dark square bishop but as you've seen in the previous games we like to push onto this pawn that's pawn that's opposite the queen because we want to basically get the exchange off of the queens so that then their king doesn't get to castle we get the 20 pointer so he's not playing that game so we have to look now at what we can attack we could take this pawn off we could develop our bishop because we want to king side castle we want to castle king safety is paramount to us and there is a big gaping hole in front of their king that allows our bishop passageway so that we can then go and castle so we're attacking a key piece on the board which is the king keeping the tension in the center here like I said at the beginning of this game we're going to look a little bit at tension yep so we're keeping this tension here we could have taken this pawn there wouldn't have been a problem with taking that pawn but we're looking further because we want to really get our king to safety castling is the key thing so now we're comfortable we're happy so our opponent now has got to be thinking how do I get my king safe am I gonna to have to castle by hand or virtual castling or am I comfortable with my pieces ready to go and attack so they've attacked with the pawn they've captured the pawn which allows us to develop our bishop so we're developing pieces as we're attacking so that releases that tension there I am not sure what that pawn move was when I see something strange I just think well I don't know was that a waste of emotion this pawn move here like I said right at the very beginning of the beginner tutorial um, it's basically looking at your opponent's play and seeing what you can find that is beginnerish in their play and seeing if you can take advantage of their beginnerish sort of play so I'm not really sure what that pawn move was this pawn's weak got a two on one there he's got his bishop here smaller piece attacking the higher piece keeping it simple now not getting carried away just because I have done those major attacks and he's just taken the knight off the board that allows our queen to come to this spot here to attack this pawn here let's just develop that so as this is the final one for the interim it is a nice lead in towards the advanced tutorial that will be coming out shortly and as usual there's going to be no surprises in the advanced so long as you've picked up the concept the one concept <laughs> the one objective yeah um, from the beginner through to the interim and you're actually practicing it and basically you know applying it in your games trying to apply it constantly trying to apply it yes still look at all the other learning things you know going on you know looking at the purist side of things but there's no, no harm in actually looking at something a little bit unconventional but effective mm, this 
this um, I'm not too sure about these moves that that are going on here now because it's opened up space for our Queen to have activity we could double up here Rook could come across here putting pressure onto this um, Knight so he loses his Queen there's a whole heap of stuff that could go on here I'm going to go with the smallest one first I think his Rook will probably come and challenge the, the Queen We do have a little space here just to attack the queen, king, but you know, knight can block, bishop can block, queen can block, so it's no no big shakes really. Yep, so he has done. So we'll do that, follow that track. I don't know what move he's going to do next, but I've just moved one move ahead, one move at a time. Yeah, so that one move, I'm looking at what's the dangers after that one move in it a small way that's all nothing big so yes yeah, so he's gone with the option of going for the queen exchange bishop can take because it's got a check on the king queen can't take so the king has to take then the rook can come here put a check on the king king probably may go back but it's causing them some distress Let's take with the bishop because it's got a check on the king. King can't actually take back what am I on about? He has to go here. Mmm, savage times. So the bishop's got the rook. Oh, I could bring my rook here. Or do I lose out though? Oh, I'd lose out if I started messing about, wouldn't I? probably takes my queen uh, I'm gonna try it though I'm gonna try it at least the bishop can take back yeah let's take back could still take the rook with the bishop so that's a lot of pressure right at the start of the game uh, da -da 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 -da. Let, don't overthink it just simple capture up white square bishops looking a little bit there's no real you know no accesses so I've got to think just simple maybe rooks here rooks there nice and simple so we did nothing fancy at all within this game all simple stuff simple attacks and fingers crossed we've got to a better position because currently they're blocked in so they're now going to do the cornered cat thing and come out scratching so the knight can jump here it can jump there to attack the bishop going there it's attacking the, the pawn let's go in the centre for uh, a bit more movement, a bit more options. So it's still attacking the bishop anyway. going for an exchange it's gone for an exchange we could simply exchange is there we're plus five because we've got a rook right okay so we could exchange down quite easily really we were looking to double up but we don't need to rush that do we we can go and double up anyway let's just take it off the board what's all the talking about this we can get caught in these situations can't we um, 
overthinking a situation. We did want to double up. The simpler the better, just keep it nice and straightforward. Okay, I'm now looking at what the opponent can actually do. And his knight is not going to cause us any trouble just yet. Have a plan, stick with the plan until the opponent tells you otherwise. Simple as that. <laughs> That's what we're doing now. We're sticking with the doubling with the rooks until such time as there's a question mark from the opponent. Simple direct moves to remove pieces from the ball strategically and work towards checkmate if you can. If not, just take the pieces off the board. Just bring the knight back around here. Not too sure about it, just hanging around up here like a, a lost sheep getting attacked to the front and centre. Okay, so we've got the check on the king here just to start the ball rolling. I do have a check with the knight, but I'm not sure if that's it. I think we'll go with that. Maybe then push the pawn up just to support it. So we can condense the king into this area. Yeah, just push the pawn. Simple. So with that move, I believe, is, is he crunching himself in? Just go here with the pawn. I suppose he can try and hide in this corner here. So it's fairly safe. So we might be giving him a little bit of a castle. Just bring the rook across. here yep so nicely just blocking off the escape hatch and then the knight I think is probably going to do the rest let's come around here maybe get the rook across that sort of situation unless of course the opponent wants to block that access point and which he hasn't just yet hmm knight blocker don't you just hate the night blockers? Mm hmm. Let's take the pawn like we said. There's nothing that can get that knight away apart from my knight. But like we said, we were looking at maybe trying to work the rook and stuff, stuff around here. Got stuff here. There's always an urgency to go for a checkmate, but don't see it at the minute. I've given them a little bit of a castle here. Could come across just to attack this pawn, though, couldn't we? Could take that one. I'm more inclined to come here just to see what happens. Yeah, he's not wearing any of that, but he's taking himself out of that castle, so could be a draw. Could end up being a draw, couldn't it? If we went here, what would happen? Yeah, it comes down to a, yeah. Let's go back here for now. Just for now. Might be a tricky one. Got this pawn potentially. It has potential. So taking your time in these sort of games, it's a longer play game. It helps to, I think it helps you to appreciate the, the art of chess. That's the whole idea behind these tutorials. It's 
to appreciate the art of chess within your own game and in your own way, in your own style, as you as an individual, not you as somebody who's learned from a book how to do a Sicilian. That's not you playing, you know, that's you playing somebody else's game. This is on about trying to make you an individual within your game using, as a starter, this simple concept. His rook has come to defend his king. I'm going to do a push. Can't do any more because it's nice there, so it's got potential. If these stay here, we may as well take them off, but I'm still interested in this one. But, um, could do a, like a distraction move king takes but then we lose this pawn as well so I might be prepared to lose those I might be prepared to lose them yeah I might be prepared to sacrifice these pieces to get his unprotected king if I can so those are four processes that are going on it's a strategy starting to build up but I have options and I'm gonna have to start finalizing my options has gone in attacking the rook there's no point messing about let's go for one of the options that we had and he's moving fast so he's worked something out he's worked something out do, 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 do. push that was one of my options That's an option. This king is so. Oh, that's an option. Well, it seems to be coming together a little bit. The knight fork. This knight's probably looking for a fork here on the rook. But if he does that, we get the pin. Drops his pawn. Ooh, that's a bit nasty. Drops his pawn protected, but all showed that the opponent left the game for a second there. So he has attacked. With the advanced pawn that we've got, we could do some we could do something. We could come back here. Options. Pawn could go and attack. Rook could come and attack the knight. Options, options. This one gets the, this one gets the pawn advanced up the board, and I don't think the knight can stop it, can it? Rook here with a check on his king. If the rook takes, the pawn takes, and then the knight is going to try its best to. Well, if it does that, the knight takes it. Yeah, so it's more advanced up the board. It's this pawn. If we went with this line, work it through. Rook takes. The rook doesn't have to take though, the king could just move out of the way. But if he does, then we just take the rook for free. So the rook takes, the pawn takes. The knight is not going to go there because he's thinking the rook's going to take, because the rook would. The only place it can go to is here. Our knight takes, the king takes, and then the pawn gets promoted. Yep, okay. Let's do that. Check.
able to get a resignation now, but they may play through. Just taking the rook. Ah, you know what? Didn't even come into the um, equation, did it? Queen putting a check on the king at all. Didn't even think of that. So there's no stalemate type things because he's got all these pawns here. So now he's making me think. He's making me have to work. He's coming down for the pawn. Do I want to be greedy? I'm on a white square so I can put a check on his king and also the knight. So let's just bring that here. There's no rush, I've got 10 minutes and it's a 5 second increment. So try and find the better moves if they continue playing. And they've resigned. So, quick look at the analysis on that one. on so this is the the last game in the inter they've offered a rematch do you think we should go for a rematch no no that was the last one okay <laughs> resist the urge um, okay so they pushed through and at this game we were gonna we said well we're gonna work on tension so ordinarily we'd, we'd be whipping that pawn off but we brought the knight through but I liked our opponent's style they just whipped that pawn off loved it grabbed the pawn and then they attacked loved it absolutely loved it it's the, it's the way chess should be played yeah then we attacked the pawn but then I, I think they went a bit too far with this other pawn push here um, the evaluation bar is not showing any great shakes really but um, what's it doing it, there's no nothing supporting it um, it's not really going to have much of a strength because there's nothing behind it so then after that point there the bishop comes out as you can see the gauge bar is actually on our side um, even if it wasn't I'd be saying well I, I didn't really think it was a good enough move strong enough it was spoilt from that move it had enough space already you know the pawns were highly advanced up the board so I don't think it needed that extra movement so then we start targeting key areas especially the king and then we castled keep intention here in the center like I said we could have taken this pawn but we wanted to keep our king safe and they captured and then we captured back small piece attacking a high piece lots of targeting going on and captured again targeting the pawn in the corner and this pawn here look at the gauge bar it is absolutely going wild for us because of the element of that pawn pushed it that that pawn let the queen in into the key square here in front of the king and then basically that was all she wrote from this point really bishop captures bring the rook into the game so the king was struggling at this point because it wasn't protected, it was out in the open. So with our continued targeting and our focal point on using the strengths of the pieces, the strength of the rooks on open files, taking our time to focus on that, bringing our knight back because we felt, well, if we take it up to the top, it may get trapped. And you know, I'm so tired of getting my knight trapped, taking it forward. Um, that I thought well I'm bringing it back this time this is the last last game in the intermediate section let's put a good performance in just bring it back and that's from lessons learned so that's the type of stuff that we always want to keep doing with our games is learning from them all the time and every time we get burnt we, we don't want to get burnt that way so we, we do something different slightly we go protected so that was me bringing the knight back there now we can attack the king and then support the knight because now we're trying to make a little gate around the king so that we can potentially attack it which it seems to be working out okay so it's giving itself a little bit of a protective um, shell but it's almost like we're, so we're saying this is where we're putting you yeah so you can't go out of the way and when we choose to come and get you that's when we'll come and get you so we started to do our dance around the king and this pawn the sea pawn is very devilish in its little sneaky moves up 
small little tiny incremental moves and then the exchange at that point there then it was too much so that is the intermediate chess tutorial